Hey guys, what's going on? It's that home theater dude. Got a brand episode for you today. Today's video is going to be about the Earthquake Sound Dual 15 inch Mark VI Supernova Subwoofer. I'm going to do a full review and I'll do it right after the intro. Okay, so this is the Earthquake Sound Supernova Mark VI. There is a Mark VII. Um, that one basically just has DSP uh, controlled in it. It has a little bit of a design difference. Uh, it's not really a cube, but it has a little more swept type of look. So that's the main difference in between that one. Typically everything I'm gonna tell you guys about this unit, that unit has. So with this one, it's gonna have this uh, passive radiator. So this is called symmetrically loaded audio passive system. That's the slaps, so this is the active. So it's dual 15s. You have 115 here, 115 on the back. So with this one, this one's actually controlled by this amplifier right here. This is a 600 watt Clash J amplifier, which is different than most subwoofer amplifiers. Typically, if you're gonna be buying a subwoofer like this one right here, it's an SVS, that one's Class D. Um, and usually if you're listening to like uh, stereo speakers and things like that, that could be Class A, Class AB. But this one uses Class J, which is probably uh, the most notable thing that I think that separates this one from the rest of the group because the, the amount of output that you get from this uh, 600 watts doesn't equal the output that I've heard from almost any other subwoofer I've heard at 600 watts. So back here, you're gonna have a couple different controls that you typically aren't gonna have on a normal subwoofer setup. So here you have your two inputs. You have a balanced and unbalanced inputs. So if you're gonna be using this as a dedicated home theater environment, highly recommend using setting up your subwoofer cable. Doesn't matter which, which sub out, pre out it's on, on your AVR. Plug that same subwoofer cable into this input too. This is a dedicated LFE input but if you're using an older setup or you really want to wide them out to, to subwoofer cables, you can put two, it's not really necessary. And the best thing with this one is this, this uh, control right here, I'm not gonna turn it because we already have it set up for this room. So with this one, it's gonna be uh, infinity. So you can keep, keep turning it to the left or right and it's never gonna stop moving. There's no mechanical um, stops in this one. And each click is gonna be equal one dB of gain. And with that, it also has a clipping light so the way you set this thing up is you turn it all the way to the right, all the way to the max until it starts clipping. You'll see this light constantly illuminated. Then you turn it back to give you a little bit of headroom on this actual amplifier. So you're never gonna have any clip signal going through this unit um, once you get it set up. So that's actually a really cool design. Almost any other subwoofer I've seen doesn't have that. That's something I've seen in more like the car audio world. But I think that even in a home theater environment, it's definitely good food for thought to have that just so that you know you're never you know running a dirty signal to your amplifier or your actual um, from your amplifier to your your speaker itself another thing i will note is that what separates this one from other ones is that it has two different adjustments for phase so these are run in series and the reason why it's so cool is that typically all you're going to have on a normal subwoofer is just your phase control you're going to have zero or 180 or whatever it is and then you can increase or decrease to match the room perfectly on that point. Another cool thing you're gonna have over here that isn't uh, typical than normal is you're gonna have these room corrections. Sometimes, and well, you guys know me, I'm familiar with SVS subs. They have an electronic DSP. So with that one, you can adjust for room corrections. Um, this one, it's kind of like a, a, a little, little old school, I think, but it's a little more precise because it's tactile and you, you can actually control what your room is doing. This, you would want, this is a little more advanced. I would totally recommend setting this thing up with uh, uh, like a spectrum analyzer, using some pink noise, different things like that. Um, basically, this is a little more advanced stuff for most people, for consumer grade stuff. You don't necessarily need to use it, but if you're one of those guys that has to have the best of the best, then you, you might wanna go that route as well. Uh, but uh, with, with saying all that, these little um, controls, the manufacturer basically gives you a good estimate on what to turn these things to. So um, I think with this one, you turn it three quarters of the way up, this one half the way up, this one a quarter of the turn, and it's 20, 30, and 40 hertz. And that's basically what they say to use for most rooms. But obviously most rooms aren't your room, so make it custom tailored to your room. So that's basically covering this. You have your unbalanced, balanced input, or unbalanced and balanced inputs. You have your legacy controls. So if you wanna run these in series with your front speakers, or if you wanna run these with your front speakers, you can as well. And that basically controls this one. So it's a nice little plate amplifier. You don't have to buy an uh, actual um, amplifier outside of this one. Some people will think that whenever you buy a subwoofer that they, you, you have to ask which amplifier should I power it with. Almost every single subwoofer on the, in the home theater market is gonna have a plate amplifier or amplifier built into the box. So it's an all-in-one unit. 
So it's a very simple design. Uh, the way this thing sounds is incredible. I've, I've really heard this thing uh, shine in my space and I've turned it up to the nines. Um, you guys know that I have a little bit of a smaller room. It's not really a small room, it's, it's, it's a pretty big room, but it's open to the rest of the, of the house. So with having a sub this size, even, even though it's only 600 watts, um, you would think that it basically depends on the size of the room and it does. So you wanna buy your subwoofer to fit your room size. You don't wanna have a small little dinky um, six inch sub going in a room that's like 4,000 square feet. It just, it doesn't make any sense. It might sound good in one specific location that you're sitting at, but it's not gonna fill up your, your whole space. So in a room that this, that's this size, I think, what would you say this was, 20 by 30? Uh, 28 by 16. 28 by 16? So basically in a room that's 28 by 16, this subwoofer doesn't fill up the entire space. But saying that, having this one in the back of the room, where we have, whenever we have it set up, about maybe 70% of the room forward, you, it wasn't that much of an authority type of sound or an authoritative type of sound. But seriously, who's really sitting up there anyway? Another thing to consider is that since this one is only 600 watts, and I say that kind of loosely, it's only 600 watts, which means it's that's what it's gonna give you. The cool thing is, is, is it doesn't have a THX certification on it, but this one is certified higher than THX standards. If they wanted to, they could totally go out and get their THX stamp right on this thing, and you guys would probably pay a little more for it. Um, but you don't necessarily need to do that because they did all the, 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 the homework, they did all the research, and they basically made this thing to have a whole lot of headroom you know, typically whenever 30 hertz hits, you hear, you hear like a, a decline in your subwoofer's performance. That's from brand X. This one doesn't do that. This one actually gets a little louder rolling up to that, to that mark. And then obviously at 20 hertz, you can't hear it anyway, but you can feel it. So this one packs a serious punch. And uh, I, th I think it basically comes with its price tag. Like I was talking about before, this thing starts out at $28.99. Um, for the piano black finish, it's actually a little more expensive. And then the Mark 7, it gets even more expensive than that. So um, it's very, very pleasing to watch this slaps unit go in and out. Like I was talking about before, uh, one inch here equals four inches here. So like I was talking about 600 watts continuous power, that's true sine wave power. So that's how they can get those THX type of uh, certific or standards without the actual certification. It's straight up, you will get thunderous, kick you in the chest, like fill your entire room, shake your body type of base with this actual unit and it's just 600 watts. Another cool thing is it's 1200 watts dynamic. And the, the really cool thing with this one is they, they rate it at 1200 watts dynamic, but what it means is it can run continuously unlimited at that 1200 watts without damaging anything. So obviously it's, it's conservatively rated for 600, but I would probably say that this thing is more, more around the, the realm of 1200. So that's why it can compete with all those big dogs and that's why it's this expensive as well. Another thing that we're gonna talk about is uh, this is your active radiator, like we, we've already said, but on the back, this slaps unit, this thing is just a lot of fun. So since this isn't mechanically connected to the front, basically what it is, is it's symmetrically loaded, which basically means typically in a passive radiator system, you're gonna have the um, passive radiators on the side. And the reason why they do that is because the box isn't inert in the first place. So they, they kind of cheat by making those side passive radiators on there so that you're able to get the um, sound performance that you would want out of that basically not having it here. The reason why they did this one is because it gives it kind of like a mechanical advantage on, since this one goes out, this one's going out at the same time. One inch travel here equals four inch travels here. And since they're not connected, you can punch it. You can kick it. The guy kicked it at, at Cedia. And every single time I have this thing in the house, I like to just come up to it and just jiggle it mess with it, it's not gonna damage it. So this isn't something that is actually attached to a voice coil, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, but the biggest biggest thing with this one is you double your surface area for um, sound radiation. So obviously you have your 15 up here and then you have your 15 back here. So with this one, um, since the way the box is designed is it's supposed to be a sealed sub above 25 Hertz, if I'm not mistaken, and then it becomes a ported vented subwoofer below 25 Hertz. So that's why you're able to have this type of suspension is why I'm always gonna call it like a suspension because in the most simpl simplistic terms, that's what it is. You're having a base suspension. So with that, you're having one go out the back, you're having one come out the front and you just get a more a well-balanced sound coming out of this thing. And this thing just hits so hard and it's just so authoritative and just a small package. So you can really just pump this in any corner of the room. You can put it in anyone's room and basically make it dissolve. And I'm just really, really impressed with these things. So I don't think I have anything else 
to talk about with this unit itself. I've had it for a really long time. I've pretty much had it since Cedia. Um, <laughs> there's been some stuff going on at the house, so I've, I've just been able to finally get this review out for you guys now. A lot of you guys have been asking about it. As it stands, if, if you're gonna pay MSRP on this thing, I still think that this is a really good value and a really good subwoofer, even though it's only 600 watts. So I think that pretty much concludes everything I have to say about the Earthquake Sound Supernova Mark VI. Um, maybe I'll get the Mark VII in the house. That one basically adds, has all the same stuff as this one. It just adds the DSP as well as a um, electronic, electronically controlled app. That way you can specifically target um, EQ on your subwoofer and make it perfect for your room. So you're not just using these little analog room corrections. Whoop. You're not just using these analog room corrections right here. You're actually using the specific stuff for your actual room. So some people prefer that over this. It's a little more um, controllability, um, but to be honest, this, this thing sounds great and uh, I, I wouldn't mind keeping one of these at the house. So you guys let me know what you think about this review. I, I've, I've been really impressed with this earthquake, earthquake sound subwoofer and uh, I think that's all I have. So make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.